I'll turn it over to Dr. Mahajan and he'll uh, talk about whatever is on his agenda today and then you may have a few questions. So, uh, Dr. Ray asked me what topic uh, I want to cover today and I was giving it a thought. I said uh, most of the folks uh, which Ray leads are 65 plus and what's the number one thought process uh, in most of these folks who are uh, in my practice uh, is not to get a stroke, not to get a heart attack. So I thought let's address that uh, again. So why it's important, you know, the statistics tells you that in the United States, uh, every 40 seconds, a person gets a heart attack, every 40 seconds. There are about more than 800,000 heart attacks a year. And out of those, almost 600,000 heart attacks are first time. Similarly, in strokes, same kind of numbers, about 750,000 strokes a year in the United States. And out of those, 600,000 strokes are first time. And interestingly, about 185,000 strokes out of those are repeat, that means one in four person gets strokes again and again. So when I was saying that some of you folks who attended my lecture five years back may have a stroke, I was not kidding. You know, there is a higher risk if you had a stroke before to get a stroke again. Any of you guys had a misfortune of having a heart attack or stroke in this room? Well, there are a lot of hands because we are uh, in that demographic or age group uh, where we start seeing all those risk factors accumulating, which I'm going to talk about. Um, all right, so let's talk about stroke. I know stroke is a biggie in terms of um, thinking that, you know, God forbid you can't speak, uh, your right side not moving, you know, that pretty much puts you out of your home situation, you know, so you end up not having the same quality. So I think stroke is much more uh, in the people's mind than a disability. Uh, and interesting part about both strokes and heart attack is the risk factors are similar. So that's why I combine those two topics together. If you think about it, you know, the, what's a stroke? Stroke is, you know, the brain is the organ and the blood goes through the carotids up to the brain and it gets limited and then you get a stroke. Now, most of the strokes, about 85 percent plus, are that way, which is ischemic strokes. So what I mean by that is the blood supply is limited because the plaque build up and then you get a stroke. About 15 percent could be hemorrhagic, which means there could be a bleed up there if you're taking a blood thinner, like Comodin or Zorelto or other quiz, and you fall. Even without falling, let's say your pressure goes up or you have aneurysm and ruptured got a bit up there. So that's a blood in the brain kind of stroke. Rare, but it's there. And the last stroke is a embolic stroke. That means if you have a uh, clot in your heart and it breaks loose and goes to your brain. I'll share a small story. I was in my training in New York and my professor was in his 70 of uh, oncology. So I was doing rotation with him and he was funky, very active and I said, What's your secret? He says, son, when you get to 50s and 60s, you realize that we should do it now. I said, what's that? He says, never use elevators. And I was thinking about it the other day when I was preparing for this talk. What a profound thing to say, because our lives as physicians are so crazy busy that to push in exercise is difficult. Same thing applies to you guys too. You got grandkids, you got bingo, you got whatever else you have when coming to these meetings. It's hard to throw in exercise in between. But if you make it part of your life, you don't feel it. So uh, that's what I meant by not asking for handicap parking permits, you know, and parking a little bit away and then making it part of your routine. I know it hurts, I know it's stiff, the joints are stiff. But more you do it, more it becomes your habit. 
more you're going to reap the rewards. I think 30 minutes five times a week and the 50 minutes a week or 275, I mean 175 minute session or you can break it down of more cardiovascular, aggressive cardiovascular workouts twice a week lifting weight. Yes, that's ideal. So if you, if you can uh, get an Apple Watch or Fitbit Watch, it's 70, 80 bucks the Fitbit watches. It keeps you honest. Go small. Just say, I want 2,000 steps a day. I don't care for 10,000 steps. Go 2,000 steps. But have a goal. Without a goal, we don't go anywhere. You know, we as humans are driven by goals. So just a simple goal of 2,000 steps a day, I'm happy. Because you'll get less arthritis, you'll get less falls, plus the two topics we have, less strokes and heart attacks. Just start with that. The next piece is watch your weight. I'll leave it alone because it's a touchy topic. But if you can keep your body mass index down, keep your weight circumference down, in men less than 40 inches, women less than 50, uh, 35, and if you're Southeast Asian like me or uh, F, I mean, uh, Native American, it should be five inches less for that because you know our arteries are smaller and the Native Americans, the Southeast Asians, the Afro Americans, they get strokes and heart attack at a younger age, so they need to be a little bit tighter with their risk factor control. How many in this room smoke? Maybe five snakes in their shine today. <laughs> uh, but I'm glad most of you don't because that does reduce your oxygen going to your heart muscles and your brain and the, they have the heart has to work harder and more strokes and heart attacks. So I'm glad most of you don't smoke, so I won't cover that as much. But if your kids do, talk to them to say, hey, you know, no more Christmas gifts for you if you keep smoking. Um, Managed condition, what does that mean? You know, I mentioned diabetes a few times, I mentioned cholesterol a few times, I mentioned high blood pressure a few times. I'll throw in sleep apnea in there too. Uh, if you have atrial fibrillation, you know, I'll throw that in too. So those are the chronic conditions you should make sure, see your providers and, you know, get the medication. Please don't stop the blood thinners if you're on atrial fibrillation on your own. You know, that will prevent strokes. Um, diabetes is critical. Diabetes is linked with the, not only heart attacks and stroke, but also poor circulation in the legs. The most common cause for MPT in the adult age is diabetes. And the same concept, the arteries don't discriminate whether they're in the legs or in the heart or the brain. The arteries are arteries. And diabetes makes them inflamed and cause plaque buildup and reduce your life expectancy. So, Keeping your A1C less than seven, if possible, 6.5. But at least in between that, the average sugar is critical. Take your medicine, you know, just, uh, I know some of uh, you guys have good benefits, you belong to this wonderful group. Uh, most of you, you know, Medicare and Med Advantage plans give you, you know, good coverage on generic drugs. So most of the statins, the aspirins, the ACE inhibitors, uh, ACE receptor blockers, blood thinners, they all, some of the blood thinners are expensive, but most of them are generic these days. So if you have trouble getting them, you know, you can ask your provider and or look at good RX kind of programs if you're in the medicals. But don't skip your meds, please. And be a team player. What it means is, you know, just work with your primary care provider, work with your cardiologist, work with your dietitian, and you know, work together. We can only give suggestions into the day, you know, you're not gonna do it, you know, I'll lose a customer.